Leslie, I hope that you're doing well out there today. Thanks for watching today's video. I know you're going to love it. We just got back into town having attended some great firearms training. This is going to be our class review, otherwise known as an after action review of a block of classes out at the Tactical Rifleman Training School, which is located in Tennessee. A group of my shooting buddies and I that I train a lot with, we concluded a five day road trip and we had a fantastic time. When doing after action reports, a lot of times students will ask themselves, hey, should I actually write a review? In this case, I'm doing a video review and follow up. Of course, the answer, in my opinion, should be yes. I'm gonna take you through the who, what, when, where, why, and we're gonna recap the actual journey out there, the accommodations, the classroom setting, the cadre, the instructors, which are all awesome, by the way. I actually took two classes and one of my buddies took three. I think I'm also going to hit on the philosophies of things that I learned along the way at a higher level so as to whet your appetite so that you can consider taking your own class out there. And go ahead and take aim at the like button down below. Subscribe to the Guns and Outdoors channel so make sure you stand by. back. It's important to surround yourself with good people. I've had the pleasure of training with an awesome group of like-minded guys, which made the whole experience extraordinary. I really encourage you to get out to your local range and start competing and participating in events so you can meet new people. Some people you're going to meet, you're going to love, and there's going to be some people that you can't stand, personality conflicts, and that's okay. People naturally gravitate towards others that they appreciate, respect, and like hanging out with. The benefit of traveling and taking training classes, for me anyway, and then what I learned with my crew, is that you already have instant camaraderie. Each person in my group has a skill set. Each one is really good at certain things, and we all complement each other well. Everyone knows what each other brings to the table, for lack of a better word. And at this point in my group of guys, I want to say we've known each other for five years with a couple guys I've known for over 10. You're able to buddy up when you get to those classes, stand on the line, and know that the guy to your left, the guy to your right, is highly competent. It's not going to be doing anything foolish. Everyone has their unique perspective and insights, and that's great. I also like the ability to compare notes, whether you're over dinner or if you're roommating up. Hey, man, did you have one drill? Yeah, what was that all about? Can you, can you clarify what, you, what would your takeaway on this instance? On road trips, we all pitch in on fuel, right? Everybody kicks in 80 bucks, especially these days. You know, it kind of keeps the, the guy's vehicle that we're using, gives them a, a little bit of relief. You can even share hotel rooms. Easy to get a couple double beds, a couple queen beds. I do have some guys in the group that, hey, man, I want my own room. Eh, no problem with that. Those that want to buddy up can buddy up. And those that want their own room, a little rest and relaxation, I certainly understand. Another thing that you can do when you're convoying is you can take turns driving. That way, the owner of the vehicle isn't just getting worn out by the time he gets there, right? Especially on long road trips. All of these kind of things are things that I've experienced and learned. And it helps keep the costs down and the fun factor up. Well, we've had some great trips in the past. And this one was also just great. So why tactical riflemen? Let's start with the internet and the YouTube side of things. With everything going on in the world over the last two years, I've been hitting a lot of podcasts on YouTube myself and whatnot. I'm very selective with my news sources. I'm sure you're the same. I actually ended up coming across the tactical rifleman YouTube channel and I started listening to Carl Erickson and Chad Holsizer. They made a great pair and the topics that they cover were just fascinating for me. Equally as appealing is that Carl is just a badass that runs his own training school. You mean I can listen and learn all this cool information and topics that I'm interested in and then back it up with a practical application by taking a class? Oh yeah, I'm in for that. Let me touch on a brief background of the instructors along with the disclaimer. Let's get that out of the way now. If I get any of this wrong, please forgive me. This is entertainment for you with bits of education sprinkled in. to make it a video-based after-action report. I want to share it because we're all like-minded here. And as always, everybody's mileage may vary. 
The primary instructor and proprietor of the business is Carl Erickson, and Carl served about 25 years in the U.S. Army in the early days in the infantry as a scout sniper with the 101st. Over in Desert Storm, he then came back, applied, made it, and, and spent the majority of his career after that in SF as a Green Beret out at Fort Campbell, Kentucky with the 5th Special Forces Group. On the competitive side of the house, Carl won season one of the Maximum Warrior competition. That aired about either online or on TV about 10 years ago now, and it was sponsored by Maxim Magazine and Jeep. Chad was in the Army Infantry as well, with both guys having combat experience. Carl's the headliner and owns the brand, if you hadn't figured that out by now, with Chad and Carl's son Nick doing the backside video production and orchestration. If you want to see for yourselves, go over and check out and subscribe to the channel. Tell them that Justin Funk has an outdoors channel. That would be awesome. Carl does a Tactical Tuesday live stream. He does Friday videos, that sort of thing, drills of the week. He has awesome guests on his show, and he also does product reviews. He's extremely entertaining, funny, and educational, just an all-around badass. Who doesn't want to get some of that? Training side. What sets the training school apart from others, in my opinion? And uh, you know what they say about opinions. Number one. What I appreciate about Carl versus other big dogs in the firearms training industry is his ability to explain the why. Additionally, Carl has a gift of recounting detail and telling stories. He has an uncanny ability to tell a story and make the listener see via their mind's eye that they're right there in the combat zone, in the action, standing next to him. He has a way of pulling the listener right in. He is the best storyteller in this space that I've come across. I feel compelled to speak to this part for a brief moment. In order for me to speak on the topic of training as an average Joe, I want to cover my own training background and experiences so that you know I'm not full of it, all right? I've been fortunate enough to have trained with a lot of great instructors over the last decade. I'm going to name drop here to paint a quick picture. So Valor Ridge with Reed Hendricks, Tactical Response, Chris Serino out of Ohio, who is the winner of History Channel's famous Top Shot, Brian Zenz, who was on the same show as well, as well as the All-Star Season, and who is a 12-time national NRA bullseye champion. There isn't another guy on the planet, as far as I'm concerned, that can outshoot from a precision perspective. Brian Zenz. Trained with Jeff Gonzalez, a Navy SEAL with a specialization in concealed carry out of Texas. Pat McNamara from the unit, which requires absolutely zero introductions. Everyone knows Mac from the interweb, so go and get you some. A couple of classes with Larry Vickers as well, who is awesome in a private setting, by the way. And my man, Dutch Moyer from the unit, who can run and gun to this day still with the best of them. I would also be remiss if I left out many fantastic instructors at the local level. I've learned so much from all these guys, and Carl was no exception. Back to Carl at Tactical Rifleman. He's pretty much a subject matter expert in a lot of things. You'll see that when you train with him. You're going to realize front and center, first thing, he's been there and done that. He's that type of guy, as well as his cadre. You're going to meet and love the staff members. I'm going to talk about more of them here in a few. As I just stated, Carl's extremely knowledgeable in a lot of subject matter. He can cover and teach medical, IFACs, tourniquet, airbags, IVs, trauma. He can give you advice on night vision, PVS-14, green versus white phosphorus, film versus unfilmed, and then move on to room clearing, small unit tactics. <laughs> From there, you can talk ballistics, barometric pressure, worm formulas, point of aim, point of impact, bullet flight paths, ballistic coefficients, bolt gun setups, and even Barrett 50 cal history. He teaches weapon mounted light surveillance, counter surveillance, all while telling you a story that when he was in the middle of Iraq laying down suppressive fire, laying waste to tons of insurgents with his M134D minigun mounted on a gun truck. There you go. How's that? One of Carl's philosophies and saying is I want you guys to understand the why behind things. That really resonates with me personally as I've seen so many leaders in corporate America, regardless of whatever profession you might be in, not explain the why. People make decisions above us, the man, whoever that is. 
you know, they don't explain the why. And if they would, employees would get behind that and we'd all be better off. So yeah, Carl Erickson, big on his students, understanding the why. You go ahead and check out their website, select a class that fits your needs. No doubt about it, Carl and his team will prepare you for tomorrow's threats and help turn you into a more capable citizen. His knowledge and perspective is super relevant and up to date. He's up to speed on a lot of current events. It doesn't put out any bad content and doesn't regurgitate someone else's training curriculum. All right, the journey. I wanted to take the combat pistol carbine class with Carl. I ran it by my buddies actually last year, gained a consensus on the date and the start, and then we all started saving money. You know, when it comes to orchestrating a road trip like this, I knew that I needed to start communicating early and often. And I will admit, and I did admit when we were having dinner that first night to the guys over beers, I was like, man, this is like herding cats with you guys. Right. So what was the name of that class? Well, where are we going again? How much is it? When do I have to register by? The whole gambit. Right. But we got through it. It's part of the fun. Once we got all that sorted, it was time to hit the road. The who? Our group was originally 10 or 11 guys, but we actually had a few drop because of life circumstances. And then we ended up getting down to seven experienced shooters. Man, we'd had a blast. I recall us hitting the road on a twilight Wednesday morning for Clarksville, Tennessee. A couple of guys had the big F-150s, extended cab trucks. So that makes it very convenient for us to load all our gear, ammo, and equipment and head out on the highway. You guys will recognize some of the faces here on the channel as you see some of the pictures, but we've got Tim, Matt, Brett, Jack, Zach, a couple other guys that shall remain anonymous, right? Reality is that you have to keep them anonymous because unfortunately, in their career fields, they don't want certain things to get out and be known. So there you have it. We do our best to be on the interwebs with a channel and keep these guys anonymous. We now need to cover in a little more detail the rest of Carl's instructor. So let's do that. During the Combat Pistol 101 class, you get to meet Carl and the TR crew. First up was Emery Morgenstern. He's former Israeli Defense Forces. You can tell that Emery is a fighter. He's a solid down-to-earth dude. I really like him. That's my boy. And uh, he's seen some stuff. And you can definitely tell that he loves his job and he has Carl's back. He's the type of guy that's always on the move, into knives and combatives. Next up is Randy Rawhide Worst, retired 18 Bravo weapons sergeant. Uh, retired in the Army SF as a chief warrant officer for, I call them chiefs. Uh, not to be confused, when I was in the Navy, we have our chiefs, and there aren't warrant officers, they're just senior enlisted. All right, so Randy spent years working with and understanding everything that a 18 Bravo would do. Soviet-made weapons, demolitions, foreign weapon systems, black market weapons, customizing weapons, techniques, procedures, the whole kit and caboodle. You name it, he's seen it and done it, and then has the battle scars to prove it. You would pass Randy on the street and be none the wiser that he was a ranch hand, seasoned Bronco rider, survival expert, and deputy sheriff, all before he even joined the Army and joined SF at the age of 30. Before that, a ranger at jump school and SF select. Election. Did a ton of schooling, a lot of cool stuff, and rounded out his career later as a member and chief of 12 Strong in Afghanistan, hunting for Osama bin Laden in Tora Bora. I recommend the audio book called Masters of Chaos for more stories on SF and specifically Randy Rawhide Worth, an SF legend. If you just dig in a little bit into the background of your instructor, you're really going to appreciate these guys all the more. I told Randy uh, in between drills in a class that uh, I want to take a survival class whenever he's ready. He's looking to relocate his school. He's looking for some land. He's right there, Tennessee. So if that's your thing, why don't we go out there together? Up next is Chad Holsizer. He was former Army. He saw action himself as a team leader in Afghanistan, including action in Kandahar province. Chad gave us a lot of good advice on certain things at the right time during the classes. And last but not least, new guy on Carl's team, who's also great. Thank you, are great, Mark. And, but I'm sorry, I can't remember your last name. I know that you had mentioned you were a former Marine and FBI. Uh, Mark, let me tell you, he does some good stuff. I think Mark's based out of Texas. He flied in as an adjunct instructor, and uh, he did a good job. That's your rundown on the Tactical Rifleman instructor cadre. You better believe if they give you some tips that are going to help make you a better shooter, they 100% know what they're talking about. With the background of the cadre out of the way, we can move on to the what. 
Most of the students signed up for the Thursday One Day Combat Pistol 101 class as a primer to dust off any cobwebs. My crew also wanted to take the class since it would allow us, as Brett said, size up the whole tactical rifleman experience, give us an extra day out there. That uh, was a really good point there, Brett. Zach from our crew drove in a day early to take the tactical rifleman basic combat trauma medical class. I'm gonna go ahead and splash in some pictures of that. The primary instructor for that class is a guy named Travis Hall, who himself is a former SF-18 Delta medic and actually one of their K-9 handlers. These days, Travis also runs a second chance K-9s. So if you're a disabled veteran looking for a retired working dog, give him a shout. All right, Zach gave us feedback that he really liked the medical class a lot. During that eight hour day, they hit the March algorithm, which covers trauma management, massive hemorrhage, tourniquets, types and uses, wound packing, airway, respiratory management, circulation shock, that sort of thing. If you're behind the power curve, as I like to say, with your medical and you're actually your hands-on experience, then I recommend you take a medical class. Travis is a real world combat experienced doing the stuff medic. So you're gonna learn a lot in the class. Zach said that it was definitely a solid class and that Travis knows his stuff. Carl was the backup instructor in that one. So good stuff, good stuff indeed. The where. Tactical Rifleman team teaches out in the boonies at Montgomery County Shooting Complex near That's Clarksville, Tennessee. It's a nice facility, in my opinion. It has a 25 yard range, 100 yard range, give or take a 400 yard range. I know I saw Skeet and Trap, as well as an on site pro shop in the entrance. Nice classrooms, uh, restrooms. I think they had AC in there, men and women's. So you're not roughing it if you take a class out there for Combat Pistol 101. No IWB inside the waistband appendix type holsters, just OWB. Uh, class starts around 8 a.m. in the morning. You can arrive around 7.45ish. The class kicks off in a very typical manner. Instructor introductions with Carl, student introductions around the room. Carl asks his students to briefly cover during those introductions their background so that you can size up the class, that sort of thing. But keep in mind, and he kind of tells you this, Carl does not care what your favorite color is. So we kept it brief and to the point, and it was pretty funny. Looking back at my field notes in preparation for this video, I jotted down a few first impressions. First note that I had, wow, Carl's very methodical in a good way. Second note, you can tell this is not his first rodeo by any stretch of the imagination. And you quickly formulate the impression that Carl is a confident and seasoned warrior. It's kind of funny because when you follow his channel, he's awesome, funny, engaging, and at times downright hilarious. In parallel, you also know, you're looking at these steely eyes, right? You know that he's done things that 99% of us only read about in books or see in movies. Classroom lecture starts off the usual way. You notice that Carl starts dropping experienced little knowledge bombs along the way. He touches on certain things, for example, that a competition shooter may do that aren't tactically or competitively sound. We all busted out laughing when he declared that this is a hug-free zone, right? Because that set the tone, right? He's not gonna be patting you on the back, telling you how great you are. He's gonna come down, let you know what you need to work on, point things out, put his instructors on you, and it's all about the feedback. Covered firearm safety, the safety rules, let's see, clearing of the firearms, all that 101 stuff. He emphasized that it's our job to educate others, starting with our own family on the storing of loaded guns and the importance of active self-protection. Introduce the combat mindset. I'm gonna hit on that a lot here going forward. For example, with Carl's combat mindset, you're carrying with one in the chamber. You're ready for the unthinkable. He wants you to visualize it, making the training real in your mind and not just focus on pew pew, right? The instructors want you to have a sense of urgency throughout the drills. One of the guys said the following when I asked him to take a stab at Carl's combat Stop. mindset after the class and what it meant to them from a takeaway perspective. Stop it, don't stop, keep moving. Threat. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Shoot, get behind the That's it, now get your gun up. Brett says, combat mindset to him is, I'm going to put accurate rounds, plural, 
on you before you put them on me. Being aggressive, working through any challenges resulting from malfunctions or adversity, and staying in the fight. Anyone worth shooting once is worth shooting twice. My other buddy, Matt, along with Brett, who you guys have seen on the channel, I think we were all in the War Belt video recently. He says, I like the remark that Carl made about turning out the lights. Basically, the combat mindset is about recognizing that a threat can be a threat regardless of round count. Hence, the shot to the central nervous system is sometimes necessary depending on the situation. Also, that then led to don't come off of a bad guy that's trying to kill you or do great bodily harm to you prematurely, follow up, right? that sort of thing. That's some good feedback from the guys, I gotta tell you. He's gonna cover in that classroom situational awareness, mindset, fight or flight, effect on body, vision, red dots, irons. I asked him about point shooting versus front sight focus and that led to a great conversation. If you're asking great questions, it's gonna be an awesome class. There was so much more that I am deliberately leaving out. If you wanna experience it for yourselves, then go sign up for the class. Range time. There's plenty of room for each person to pick a stall, place your gear and ammunition. Each bench has a little chair, wooden chair. It's covered from the sun, which is a nice reprieve because let me tell you, as I already spoke about, you gotta drink lots of water, man. It's like Tennessee hot, man. I don't know how they do it. Their philosophy starts to do the crawl, walk, run, but you ain't crawling for much. It kind of picks up fast. If you're the new shooter, definitely make sure you're a little more prepared. Don't let this be your combat pistol 101. Emphasis on 101. Give you the feeling that you can go and learn the basics. You're going to feel a tremendous amount of pressure if you're not up to speed. All right, so I would say definitely not a beginner class. It's on the low side of intermediate and or above in my opinion. However, if you do and are that guy, Carl says he normally takes one of his cadre and he'll assign him to work with you to get you the extra support that you need. I do want to say, however, that this is the best student to instructor ratio that I've ever seen. Let me tell you, I've been on the other end of that spectrum. I really have. Where I was in a pistol class, I had 59 students and only three instructors. We had three waves of students and it sucked. I never forgot that. It tarnished that school's reputation in my eyes and... Quite frankly, it made it simply impossible to get personalized feedback. That's why you need smaller shooting ratios. In a tactical rifleman class, you will get feedback in a group setting as well as at the individual level. When we first kicked it off, turning around because I was near Emory, uh, and I said, hey man, if you see something I'm doing wrong, please tell me. Because yeah, I know how to shoot. Precision shooting is my jam. But that doesn't mean I can't reload better, shoot faster incorporate movement, get off the X better. To close out on the Combat Pistol 101, we hit presentation, reloads, malfunction, stance, grip, ball, dummy, and then we took a nice lunch break at a local mom and pop place. The small restaurant has an awesome menu, guys. Spicy chicken sandwiches, bacon cheeseburgers, fried bologna sandwiches, all the trimmings, tater tots, freedom fries, tons of drinks like you're in a 7-Eleven, get anything you want out of there, all at a reasonable price. Lots of cold drink options. We were grabbing, not Gatorades, but this other type of sports drink. And it was awesome to just recharge and further rehydrate. The AC was cold. The food was great. Get you back in the game for the final half of the day. I should say as well that this was the first good opportunity to talk to Carl, Emery, Mark, Chad, Randy about things that you'd like to ask or inquire about. It was cool for me because I was able to sit next to Emery. What a solid dude. Uh, he's my guy. Uh, he and Randy are both into knives and knife fighting. So we were able to ask questions and everybody was able to get a little something in there. It was really nice. So we're back to the range for the back half of uh, the one day Pistol 101 class. Special call out here. I picked up tips not only from Carl, who has that whole class focus, but from Mark, who was down on my end of the line as well. And then they do rotate out, which is nice. Chad came down. And it's funny because Tim got a little extra love from Chad. Tim has been doing, he's been spending a lot of time doing hot yoga and Krav Maga and, you know, working on his combatives these days that he let himself get a little rusty with his shooting. And he actually fessed up that he didn't have his front sight focus. And, you know, <laughs> um, Chad just zoomed in on that. Hey, you know, your groups are opening up. It looks like you're losing your focus. These guys were good, man. Their diagnostics was on point. For me, I've got the accuracy down, right? So it's the reverse. 
I need to speed up. So both Mark and Chad identified that with me. Hey man, push it. If you're keyholing your shots, that's great. But you need to tell yourself, get yourself to go faster, guys. And truer words have never been said so well to me. Big thumbs up to the Combat Pistol 101 for me. I enjoyed it. After the class, a tired group of guys headed back to the hotel for showers. Some awesome Mexican food and cervezas at a restaurant called El Rancho Grande. Get this. It's only a 25-yard walking distance from our hotel, which was the Baymont by Wyndham, Clarksville. Heads up, there are two of them with that same name. So stay at the one here that I'm showing you in this video. It's much better than the other one. Don't ask me why there are two Baymont by Wyndham's in Clarksville, Tennessee, because I'm scratching my head on that one. Even the front desk at both locations was like, yeah, people get both locations confused all the time. So that's a clue, Wyndham. You guys need to work on that. All right, moving on to the next class. We now roll into combat pistol carbine course. The class size was great as well there. It had 18 students, same routine, classroom portion with participant handout. Carl kicking off the class with a pistol recap and a net new rifle specific lecture, as well as the traditional firearm safety rules. He does a solid job covering combat mindset, mindset manipulation, marksmanship. There's some stuff that Carl covers that is for paying students only. So I'm not gonna go into that and reveal his thunder. It's part of the surprise for when you get there. So again, make sure you sign up for the class and make haste because his classes fill up quickly. Directly from the class outline available on his website, the pistol rifle carbine course, pistol recap of loading and unloading procedures um, for those that didn't take the Combat Pistol 101. M4, AR loading and unloading, common stoppages and corrective actions, speed reloads, tack reloads, immediate action, remedial actions, transition drills, psychological effects of combat stressors, one-handed pistol reloads, I love that, barricades, oh, my favorite, love barricades, and then shooting on the move. Man, I suck, and you do too, and we all got to get better at that. So there's another reason to take the class. On the range, we went right to work by lunchtime for day one. We took that break and the class drove out to the same mom and pop, the former gas station spot to rest and recharge. That of course brought in more chatting and networking with fellow students as we all got to know each other better. Moving on. Then it's back to the range for the second half of day one of pistol carbine. Training went till about 5, 6 p.m. under a time crunch. We then broke for a small whatever you could scarf up dinner and snack. We only had 30 minutes to get out and back. So we tried to look for a nearby gas station and we ended up going to like a Dollar General, which is funny. Visiting the dollar store in the backwoods of Tennessee, man, that's probably the most unnerving part of the dang trip. You know, you know it reminded me of something like a deliverance, man. But uh, I'm just kidding. You know, I love the rolling hills of Tennessee. If you live there, it's a beautiful state and I can see why people love it. Dinner that night from Dollar General was a Snickers candy bar and an energy drink. Life is good. Back in the classroom again for an evening low light lecture. Mm, I love it. Carl's got tons of lights for anyone to use. He's got all the gear, all the gadgetry. It's all there. He actually doesn't recommend you run out and buy all your stuff. But come on, are you kidding me? It's an opportunity. We all think we know what we need, so we buy it in advance. But he's right. Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. Use his stuff. Take a look at it. He does a great job of covering everything. Heads up. It's a tactical training differentiator in my mind on why you again want to go to tactical rifleman class if i haven't already convinced you so at this point low light knowledge i have been in several indoor low light training classes before or workshops we've all heard of that fbi technique right for those that uh, need me to jar their memory it's the technique to ensure that anyone if they're going to aim at you that they shoot at the light because that's where they think you are coming from. The method is to hold the flashlight out away from your body, out to the side, and with your non-shooting hand yourself, right? The difference for me was that I've personally not had an instructor teach that and seven other handheld techniques I, behind that. With each type of handheld light, whether it be palm, whether it be held high, whether it's held out, um, the, the Bill Rogers technique, there's, there's lots of different lights out there. Try that and then try it with it mounted on the gun. And I guarantee you, if you run a timer, 
you'll have to agree with me that it is much more accurate and much faster to engage those targets. In addition to the kit, you perhaps most importantly, and I'll tie it back again to Carl's combat mindset with a focus on weapon mounted lights, either pistol or rifle. My buddies unanimously said, when I asked them for his take on uh, weapon mounted lights, pistol mounted lights, okay? He said, a weapon light is all about target identification. You need to see and realize what's a threat. As Carl famously said, is it a threat? Is it not a threat? Is it a threat that warrants deadly force? You need to know this stuff, right? You need to see what you're potentially shooting at in case it's your kids coming home early to surprise you from college. Also, a weapon light can potentially be a deterrent in a combat situation, as not every threat warrants deadly force. Overall, the night shooting the techniques used in conjunction with the shooting were great. It was a really long day and evening for us all, so we packed her up, headed back to the hotel. As it turned out, <laughs> so funny, we had another 50 yard walk. And this time it was in the opposite direction of the Baymont by a Wyndham Clarksville, adjacent over to the Waffle House. So the night shoot victory meal was in order. We ordered up and excitedly scarfed down our breakfast meal. I think I had waffles, eggs, toast, sausage, some OJ. We then uh, headed back to our hotel rooms for a quick shower some email, social media checks. I think I took a tablet of Motrin to get ready for the next day, keep those aches and pains down. I made a phone call home to the wife who hadn't heard from me in a couple of days. So mission accomplished, leading up to a well-deserved good night's sleep. All right, final day, Sunday. Breakfast in the lobby for those up and at it early and then directly off to the range with no classroom needed for the start of day two of combat pistol carbine. At that point, keep in mind, it's day three or day four in this journey for us. Emory started off, per my recollection, that morning with a live demo and intro of some basic team tactics with a focus on shooting on the move and formation. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the IDF knows how to conduct close quarter combat we cover the basics in this class. They do offer other classes and the shoot house, CQB, that sort of thing. That's next on my list. Emory demoed and taught body posture. Out of context, you guys won't know, but if you attended the class, you will know. Flexible feet, how to move, toe, heel, upper body, shock absorbers, all that sort of thing. If you want to know more, then sign up for yourself. They give you a glimpse of some stuff that's included in the advanced pistol carbine. Emory and Carl, they make a pair. Dang, they know what's going on. You don't wanna be on the receiving end of that. We all agreed that we wanted to come back again and take the advanced class in 2022, the end of this year. We closed the class out with more combat drills and CTEs, as well as the dance of death. Reloads on the move, various shooting positions, barricades, the whole nine yards. So how did I do? I felt I did pretty good. I placed third. I got all my hits and I did all my holdovers well. I was definitely proud of that. We wrap up, students head back to the class for graduation. Carl asked you to come up and shake his hand, receive your graduation certificate. Man, these things are like little pieces of gold to me and to us. I have all my certs, I put them in my training bookshelf. It was an honor for me to finally be able to make it out there and meet those guys, shake their hands. And you go and pick your class specific t-shirt. It's an exclusive t-shirt. I think Chad makes those for us. It's awesome. You know, Combat Pistol 101 on the back of a tan one and Combat Pistol Carbine on the back of a green one. So you're going to wear the stuff with pride. Also, Carl gives you a technical rifleman patch at the start of day one. That's cool as well. Definitely, you're going to wear those proudly. Let's close her out. I want to give a big thank you to the Tactical Rifleman family, Carl, Emery, Randy, Mark, Chad, Travis, Patriot members, my, and my dear friends and fellow teammates. I'm walking away from these series of classes with so much to unpack and remember, and a long list of awesome Tactical Rifleman CTEs to practice and master. I did share in a small, brief moment with Carl that I thought his instructors did great for whatever that's worth. To me, I described it as they dropped little pearls of wisdom over the course of the three to four days, and that was special to me. Carl definitely surrounds himself with great talent. He's got an eye for that. The students get to benefit from that, all that knowledge and that wisdom. That's it for us here on the Guns and Outdoors channel. Please like and subscribe to the channel down below. Carl would say, 
you only get one shot on this tiny blue marble. So don't exist in a state of denial, all right? Be aware of what's going on around you. So much going on in the world. And hope and pray that you never have to bear down another human being by you know, mixing metal and meat together. All right, as capable citizens, which is what we all want to be, let's strive to make the world a better place. And on that note, there you have it. We're out of here. Take care of yourselves. See ya.